Okay, hello and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be an unedited video where I just talk about my November challenge, uh, things that I've made in the last few weeks. Um, it's been 14 days, so two weeks, of the November challenge. I'm sure you've, if you're into that sort of thing, then you might have seen it on Twitter. If not, go on Twitter, search the hashtag, and there's some pretty cool stuff, people doing things in Blender. I've been doing Substance Designer. And um, and also, again, this video is unedited, and I have 14 materials to go through. So um, the main issue with that is I have to open up the substances between uh, between you know between seeing them. So I think during that time I can't talk because the audio will lag out. So on the more intensive substances I won't talk between it but also I don't want to bother editing this video between my full-time job and, and actually doing the challenge itself so hopefully that's all understandable and the knowledge here is actually good um, so if you just find it useful and this is you know something you're interested in then hopefully seeing what I've made in the past few weeks um, is helpful and interesting. So, um, so it goes along with, well, it all goes along with um, my actual Twitter, so I don't feel the need to exp explain everything, because if you scroll through my Twitter you'll find these GIFs and, um, and things like that which will help you understand it a little bit as well. I'll show them in this video, but if you want to see them on repeat as GIFs, then they're on my Twitter. Um, so let's get started. This is theme one was cookie. And so I made a cookie. And I think the the main place to start is sort of where what I do with a substance is immediately I'll go to material, change it to tessellation, and this has to be reset between every file I open, so I'm not going to do this in the future. But while I'm making one, I'll change it to tessellation and I'll turn the um, the scale right up, so then we can actually see what we're working with. And I'll use the high-res plane rather than the rounded cube, which is by default. And so this was my first result. I think my first result was not my worst result, um, but it wasn't as you know, I hadn't used substance in a while, so and clearly for the challenge, I'm not focused on organizing these graphs. Um, I might organize them and put my put them on my art station because that's like a nice and easy thing to do. Um, but other than that, this is just uh, what it is at the moment, and um, we'll go through it. But obviously, I'm not bothered about every single part of it because there's. 14 of these to go through. Um, so yeah, so that's how that looks. And what I did for this one was I actually created this as a cookie. In in general, this whole thing is meant to be a cookie generator. And this thing called new graph would have been where I put like a load of cookies together. But I couldn't do it very well. And during the time of which this was the first day uh, substance, so I spent a little bit longer on this one than the other ones, but roughly all the other ones, including rendering time, uh, are about two to three hours, maybe pushing up to four hours on a weekend. Um, but I think usually between, I, yeah, I'd usually do it like around nine nine p.m., and I'd finish by like eleven half eleven. Um, and so that's sort of the general time frame that I'm on. And this, so I guess some of the more interesting parts here is this section here, which is already on my Twitter, as mentioned, as a GIF like this. Oops, so that's not the, that's right, I didn't make a GIF for this one actually. Um, or, or maybe I did, but uh, I've not got it saved here. But basically I'm blurring the bottom of a triangle to make this sort of like whip that you'd get on the top of a chocolate chip. 
and then I'm making it, imagining it from the top down. So in this scenario, we're looking at the chocolate chip from the top. Um, and then they've got this really nice node here, which allows you to extrude into 3D. So I put it at a few different angles, auto leveled it to make the levels look a little bit nicer. And then I created one that is meant to be it from the bottom because not every chocolate chip is going to be the right way up and they have flat bottoms. So that's the best I can do for that. And then the end result is some, I'd say, pretty convincing chocolate chips, which I then used a height blend to place onto the cookie. And the reason that I did that is because I needed this mask of for the colour and I used it for um, some extra little dense div divots that go below the uh, for the for the cracks, you know, so when when um when a cookie has chocolate chips in it and you cook it, the cookie expands a little bit and it causes the the area around the chocolate chips to crack more than uh, than some of the more surface bigger surface areas. So that was the general idea with that. Again, from looking at reference, that's what I did. And then the cracks themselves are just edge detects on cells, which are warped a lot and then slope blurred and leveled out to be something like that, which is then subtracted from the top. And the actual cookie is just a leveled thing to make it flatter, which is then also I've done a lot of warping here to get this um, cells to turn into sort of these layers because um, when people cook cookies, uh, not, not that I bake myself, but when people cook cookies, you put a ball of cookie dough in the middle and it'll flatten out. Um, so it causes the edges to have these sort of uh, folds within them sometimes. Um, if they're made that way, then that's how that ends up being like that. And then it's just warped a lot. And that's pretty much all I want to say about that one. Otherwise I could spend ages. So I'm going to open the next one now. I'm going to be quiet for a second while it loads. Okay, so it's worth mentioning that these renders, this is my final render for the co uh, for the cookie. The first few renders were um, in real time in Unreal. So we're getting a little rendering artifact here. And in general, um, the lighting, especially even RTX lighting, so ray trace lighting in Unreal, I quickly realized that having a tessellated plane and extruding it from a plane like we saw earlier and having the height go upwards um, in Unreal none of that information actually receives lighting um, so a bit of an oversight on my side so um, so it didn't turn out very well in terms of the final render but pretty much what it is and the same goes for the next few because they were all made in um, rendered in Unreal for a little bit. As you can see, this come out really blobby um, and it just doesn't look very good uh, with all these stretched triangles and so on. Uh, but I put the time into it and it's a daily challenge and um, I was fine with uploading whatever I had really. Um, and similarly to the cookie chocolate chips, the little bears here are created in from the top view and then extruded with a height extrude. Um, and we can see that it recently was retweeted by, um, that was recently retweeted by Substance. So it's got a few likes now, uh, which means that I guess people like those, these, these little GIFs. So if you do want to see these GIFs, then head over to my Twitter and there's quite a few of these per object. 
So, well, at least more than half of them have some of those GIFs associated with them if they've got an interesting shape that I've created in Substance. And I think my actual, so my final height here, I think there's nothing really wrong with it. And I think the actual 3D part of it looks really good. I think it, like it, it just, it doesn't feel like it should be so blobby as an end result, but in the end it turned out to be. So that's just, you know, it's just very tricky to create something like this without, um, without actual geometry, I suppose. And that's pretty much how that went. I don't think there's much more to say here. Um, lemons, so this is again rendered in Unreal. And this the, the theme was fruit, so... But in this case, the reason this turned out better is because I knew that I wanted it to be something that could be easier transferred from Substance to 3D. So it slices. And so the most interesting thing about this one is probably how it was put together at the end, at least in terms of what I wanted to learn and how and how I did it. Um, there is a GIF on my Twitter, but I haven't accidentally overwritten it with a future GIF. So I accidentally didn't change the, uh, the GIF source and I end up overwriting my old one. Um, but roughly it's the circle, it's warped inwards, you've got various different edge detects and masks that are being used to create sort of the rind here. And then some warping, and the inner section here is like a, uh, a cell that's been squashed. Um, and then it's converted into, I've used like a... a so you have splattered circular, but I didn't end up using that. I tried radial, I tried like a radial um, hemisphere thing that you would use for um, environments, and that didn't work either. And in the end, it turned out the shape mapper was the best option. I was able to map it to a circle and pull it in just enough to get this artifact in the middle that I couldn't remove. So that was fine. I just over, I just got, I just did the middle of the lemons different anyway with the stem or whatever it is, the middle. And that's how that sort of ended up how it did. So this one's a little bit messed up for some reason. But uh, the end result here is the same as this. And somewhere down the line it's getting confused. So anyway, you can see that the height looks like it's um, how it is in the file render. And I guess the, the most interesting thing here is combining it with these material transform nodes, which I think are fairly new. Um, so material transform is basically the same as a transformation 2D, but for the whole material. And then you blend them together with what is basically just a blend, but again, for the whole material. So you have to set it per channel, what it's gonna do. And then I combine that to make four, for some reason, again, it's just messed up. And then I combine that again to an atlas scatter, which is going to take this and it's going to recognize that the white space here is what needs to be scattered. Like, to divide, it doesn't have to be split into four like this. You can just have these put into any position as long as they've got a black space in between them. And the atlas scatter will take it and it will spread it out like that. Um, and that's that's how that's done, and I think that's pretty useful. So 
So the final render for this one was some of these ones. And the general, general idea here is the same. In, in this graph here, there is a GIF on my Twitter, which is, you know, gives you what, basically what you would need to know. If you know, if you know substance, then that should be enough to, to sort of be like, all right, it's warped and so on. It's just a useful way of seeing it. Um, and yeah, the most interesting thing here is pretty much just combining them into the atlas again, and then using that in a more uniform way to create the base color here, which is just, you know, and all the, all the other ones out to allow it to be how it ends up. Um, which turned out pretty good. I think I've I've actually just skipped one here. Um, yeah, I've skipped I've skipped the other one, which was the day before, which is when I switched to real time rend uh, from real time to Blender rendering cycles. So, because rain was so basic, it really came down to just like the lighting, and so that's where that went. Um, and again, it's the same sort of thing, you're just scattering the object. Um, and the most interesting thing about that is, uh, well, we'll get to it on the next one, I suppose. Uh, so actually this one I didn't save, I didn't half save. So I must have closed my computer or something like that before finishing this one. In terms of the substance, I must have just not saved it. Um, but the end result was this, and it's all the same idea, apart from this time, rather than using an atlas of 4x4, four four, I used an atlas of, like, 3x3, three three or, or uh, instead of 2x2, two two, sorry, I did probably 4x4, four four or something like that. Like, I made a lot of variations, and then combined them together a lot easier into a, into a substance, and the main idea here is on a production line of pencils, if you've got um, you've got a big low, a big bit of wood that is then chopped into little pencils, so you get this sort of you get this hot, this uh, direction of it being sliced, and then the wood itself is made out of two halves, so they they wrap around the lead in the middle, and that's why you get this. That's why I've done that little difference on either side. And the wood grain on those goes in a different direction to the angle that it's sliced or whatever, because the wood grain can go in any direction. And that's just sort of how pencils are made. So uh, the, the theme for this one was print, and initially I decided to make a fingerprint, um, but I could not make a fingerprint pattern. So I spent a little while trying to make a fingerprint pattern, and I could not do it. Um, and then so I thought, ah, blueprint paper, you know, do that instead. Um, and in the end I made it shiny. So in my final render it's like a shiny blueprint paper. But I'm not actually sure that blueprint paper is shiny. Um, there's just no rend there's no um, paper online to sh to show that. Um, in if you Google blueprint, then mainly it comes up with like 2D blueprints that have been painted and made in Photoshop or whatever. And obviously, there's no physical properties, so I couldn't really see if it was shiny or not. In my head, it was shiny, and that's what I went with. Um, and really, this is just arranging lines, you know. So I created the basic structure here. Well, I did this, turned it into, sorry, I did this, turned it into this, and then used that as a um, tile sampler, turned it into that, which created all the sections, and then it's just keep going with little overlays of lines, edges, and then sort of blurs for the folds 
so that it looks like it's been folded and reopened a few times. More folds. And that's pretty much it. Not too much in that one, that's why there's no GIF for that one, because it's just not much to it. So then a little bit different to all the others, the final render for this one was this one. And the theme was paint, so I just made a single paintbrush. It came together pretty quickly, people kind of liked it. Um, and mainly with this one, again, there is a GIF. So it, it doesn't fully explain things, but you can get the gist. Um, we'll quickly have a look through it, sort of get in the shape. And then I guess the interesting part here is that it's warped by a sphere to make it sort of look like a, a different brush shape rather than just having straight edges. Um, and then subtracting some height here. So I'm getting a gradient and I'm running it through a gradient map with this different rivet pattern and then that's creating the getting subtracted from this for the metal part which has got like you know grooves for your fingers or whatever if you're holding the brush um, and then the direct the wood here is blurred uh, is warped by the sh 3d shape to make it look like when you get wood and it's cut at an angle uh, downwards and it just you know all the grains sort of get that sort of radial pattern because it's been smoothed over and that's just how it looks so pretty much move that around and then finally it's just a sphere here with half blended bits coming out of it and shrunk down until it gets stretched into a brush shape and I sort of mask that out and change the levels on it and stuff like that. And that's how that is. Okay, I think that's loaded. Um, so, whereas this one was my was like a high quality result, in my opinion, it's un the only reason it could be uh, what it is is because the theme allowed for it to be a more generic material. Um, as in, I've made dirt before. I've not really done this system of placing rocks before, in the way that I did it, but I knew about the technique from following tutorials. Or like seeing tutorials. Um, the new Atlas scatter nodes allowed me to place little bones about the place um, and I'd already done that previously. Um, and then finally just like some little things here um, combined in similar ways to like the jelly babies and so on. So the end result here was more complex and uh, just a good result but um, but overall, I mean, there's still not tons more nodes here than there were on other things. And um, and just overall, it's, uh, it just came together because it was more of a standard material. Uh, there were a few renders for that one. Uh, no GIF, because a lot more work went into this one in terms of... Um, I knew what I wanted to do, it just would take longer to do it. Um, so the main idea of the rocks is... You get different sizes of cells and you combine them to create large and small cells because the cells are very uniform. So I do that again to break it down to smaller and 
larger ones again. And then when you edge detect that, you get these sort of clusters of small ones, some big ones, and so on. Use the flood fill node to do create this, um, which is something that I've used a lot, but I've not mentioned it so far. Um, flood fill node does that. And then from the flood fill node, if you Google that, you'll find that you can create all these little things like uh, random grayscale there or random gradients. Random gradients and different angles, which are then being subtracted from slightly beveled rocks and then extremely beveled rocks. And that's sort of how you get these crazy rock shapes. And then you multiply different heights over those to get this craziness here, you know. And that's just, and then, uh, and then that's height blended, which allows for a mask to be created where they where they overlap, height blended with the original um, dirt, which the dirt is just a bunch of different detailed things put together like four leveled into a, so that it's not so much and then I kind of wanted to have peaks and valleys so I got a cells and um, decided to multiply that over as well and then this looks pretty crazy but they all sort of just come out the same thing for some reason even though it's prehistoric was the theme, the first thing I created was a human bone, or something that you would find on a, probably not on a prehistoric animal, animal, um, just a regular bone for some reason, um, but from warping that and just squashing it around, it started to look, you know, if if the human bone was the default bone in my mind that I was thinking of and I and I made it, then getting changing that into something that looked a little bit different. Um, and then sort of this one, sort of like a tailbone or something like that, based on reference. And then same thing, but without like maybe like a spine or something like that, you know. Um, and then the actual dinosaur head, which doesn't look very good, but uh, you know, it was good enough. And the little bones, as mentioned before, are scattered randomly. Um, the big head bone and a big tail bone are the like, focus of the image. So they're not, you know, if this is this tile, then it would be a little bit rubbish. But it's not a tiling texture, so. And then I combined it into a water node, you know, water level node. And that's just the final detail on something that, you know, I, fit, I just remembered it existed and I thought, oh, I'll put that in there and do that. Um, so the end result for that one was pretty good based on, you know, two clusters of different materials. Um, and then let's go to the next one. So I just showed the renders while this was loading. Um, so for this one, the big idea here was, I mean, I decided I was going to do Aztec. So I knew it's by a reference. And for this, it was just like, oh, am I going to create all these shapes that need to be on this thing that needs to be super complicated? Um, and I just tackled it one at a time. Um, and that's why this whole section seems quite vertical. I, I didn't move on from this point and start combining things until I had a bunch of shapes to work with. Um, so most of the time I'm, I'm also using different, like that could be a shape on its own, but it's not like that could be a shape on its own. Um, I didn't end up using it. I it combined it to one more complicated shape, which uh, this was pretty much the most painful shape at the top, to be honest. Uh, figuring out how to create a 
crisscrossy system like that was pretty difficult, but I got there in the end. Um, combined and made into this bit that goes around the side, which uses a shape mapper node to turn it into a circle. And then I got a square that I'm stretching and subtracting one by one to make that sort of shape. Which ended up being those top and bottom parts. Not really the focus, so. And then a square that's combined into sort of that shape there is pretty much how it's used. Um, a beveled square that's used and, and created at multiple levels at different scales, which is combined into a sort of these shapes. This is why I didn't do a GIF for this one either, because there's just so many I wouldn't, wouldn't really know what to make a GIF of on this one. Different like ring, ring scales, which, which are used to, in the final image, to sort of slowly build up different rings. Um, that shape there was a little bit annoying to create. Um, I ended up just swirling the edge of something and then cutting it out. And by the time it was added, I knew that I knew that the end of this was going to be cut off anyway. So when I created this file shape here, I knew that when it's combined with the circle, the actual bottom of the circle here overlaps. So not too bad. Keeps on going. Different like shape mappers and uh, splat circulars to, to get the middle to look like that and so on. And then pretty much that's all the details. And the main difference between the middle here and the edges is the middle is like one big carved out thing. So in, if you imagine how this was constructed, somehow they would have carved that out of a big piece of stone by the looks of it in the reference. Um, because it didn't have like, it didn't have um, brick marks or anything to show that it was made out of anything smaller, you know. Um, I slope blurred it and stuff to get the edges going. Scaled, added everything else in, which is more standard, even though it looked like a lot of once there. It's like all that sort of stuff again with the plug fill and the slope blurs so on to create some random bricks all combined together create into color normals and so on so that was that one a little bit more basic uh, I like this result in substance, but my final render here, when looking at it on Twitter, it didn't come out too well, but um, I guess it's okay, you know, it's a bit shiny. Um, I, I was conflicted on making it, the idea is that it is a metal, it's a medieval texture, but whether it's medieval set in medieval times, in which case it would be new or whether it was medieval set in present day, where it would then be old. So clearly this Aztec one, which this is a poor, that's a bad render. Uh, but the Aztec, the Aztec one is meant to be present day, old Aztec stuff. This is meant to be, you know, an old thing. Um, and I guess the most conflicted, uh, the most complicated, sorry, part of this was to create this uh, winding pattern, which there's a GIF for. Creating that bit was annoying. Um, it took me a minute to figure it out that um, combining circles like this, you could just get the shape on the bottom right there. And then because what I needed was the edge detect to do the work for me pretty much. And to separate this part from that part to this part, you know, and so on. So it had that exact structure. That seems to have been what they went with. And so that's how that ended up. Uh, 
and then I combine these little warped circles and little warped whatever rows pattern thing. Combine it into full. And then it's pretty much your standard tile workflow, you know. Um, there's plenty of tutorials out there for things like that. So I think that's the most interesting part of that covered. And then, so the final render here that I've done yesterday was Deco or Art Deco. And um, and I was originally going to create more variations of this, but then I could not be bothered. So it's kind of you know it, you can input lines however you want, and it would create a pattern based on the sections. Um, so pretty much anything before this point, if you input. Um, something like that, which is what I created that for. If I inverted that, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it in a minute. But um, pretty much inputting a pattern like that results in it being flood filled and randomly changed to a point where it's pretty standard, adding things on here and there to a point where it's just kind of turns into the height of a uh, and roughness of a thing. Um, very standard material workflow here. It would take a longer tutorial to show exactly how to make these things. It would just kind of, this is an overview. Um, so, but like this should just work if I plug it in. I imagine that I say that and it's not going to work. But, so if I go to the next one. Yeah, so it just kind of works. Um, and that's... And that's why it's good to have Node Vember as a thing, um, because you should re I should really be displaying how these can be made into different things easily, but apparently... But, but, but it takes some time to render those things. And that's us all the way up to date in a almost 40 minute video. So that's just how it goes. Um, hopefully just seeing them, even though I didn't zoom into everything, and maybe that's what people are going to say in the comments, um, but hopefully just seeing it and um, me going through tiny bits here and there is enough for you to be like, right, well, I need to blur this. And so how am I going to do that? Looking at this video, you're like, right, well, they blurred it like this. And they, they did a non-uniform blur there, you know. You should be able to see what I was doing, even if I didn't one-to-one -one explain it. Um, so it'll take a little bit of working out, but hopefully that was useful. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.